for him to turn towards her and look at her and smile at the same time. So let me show you the videotape of this. And I show you the slides because this goes by very quickly. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, go, go, go. So you can see that one is that at the very beginning of the interaction, they're very well coordinated. That's the initial greeting and how they're greeting one another. Then there's this, in this case, a very big mismatch because of her angry facial expression. And it's a genuine expression. And I have to say in my laboratory, there are very few instances where we have mothers actually making angry facial expressions at the baby. But with this angry facial expression, there's a real mismatch between what the baby wants to do and what the mother wants to do. She wants it to stop, he wants it to continue, he now feels threatened, and she wants to re-engage with him. And then over the period of time, there's a reparation such that they go from being in a matching state to a mismatching state, back to a matching state. So there's this process of matching, mismatching, and reparation. And a critical question, and what I think is most important, is what are the effects of successful reparation? How does this affect the development of the infant, and how does this affect the development of their relationship? One of the things that comes out, one of the positive effects that comes out of a reparation is it leads to a new way of self-regulating affect. This little boy probably has never seen his mother before make this kind of facial expression. And in coping with it, he's learned a new way to control his own feelings and his own anxiety during this interaction. Second thing that he learns, which is equally as important, is that together, the mother, my mother and I, we can work together to control these feelings and we can work together to change these feelings. The other thing that happens is that there's been this break in connection and now there's a new way that the two of them can feel connected with one another. And I think a very important thing that the infant learns is that I can change my feelings from being negative and fearful to being positive. And I think one of the things we often work with in therapy with our patients or with our clients is that they essentially have a state of consciousness, not necessarily an awareness, that they feel like there's nothing that they can do to change the feeling states that they have, that they don't know that they can do that. And one of the things that we have to work with, with them as therapists is getting them to gain a sense that when there are these negative feelings, we can change them. We can change them together, and then at some point in time, you'd be able to change them on your own. And the other thing that this baby learns is something about their place in the world. This event has not happened before, and he's developed a new sense of what's possible in the world when I'm with my mother. So for example, 
He's now experienced danger and threat. He's figured out a way for him to overcome that sort of danger. They've developed a new way of being together. They've developed a way of changing what happened between them. He develops trust in the partner, in his mother, that they can work together to solve these kinds of problems. And what they've also done is they've learned, they've learned ways of repairing the interaction that can be used in other contexts when there's a mismatch or a problem in the interaction. So all of this comes out of not the perfect synchrony of the interaction, but it comes out of the working through together, not unlike a therapeutic process, working together to create new ways of being together and to create new meaning states. What happens when there's a failure of reparation? The paradigm that I've developed, excuse me. is the face-to-face, still-face paradigm. Um, this is a paradigm which is a little like we saw with the 30-month-old. The mother is in normal play with the infant, in face-to-face -face play. Then I ask her to not respond to the baby, and she does that for about a minute or two minutes. And then there's a reunion where she and the infant come back together to play together again. And the infant's typical response to this failure, because the baby can't repair this, given the instructions that we've given to the mother, is this is a sequence going A, B, C, D, is initially the baby greets the mother, gives the mother a big smile, and then a me almost within a second or two notices that she's no longer responding to him. And then he partially turns away from her. And then he fully turns away from her. So all of this effect of her not responding to him is shown in the way he organizes his body. And look at the difference between how his body is organized in the first frame in A and how it is in the last frame in D. And then babies typically cycle among these states. So the baby will greet the mother, turn away, come back, look at her again, come back, and repeatedly try to get her to respond. So here's a sequence of photos, and then I'll show you a video again. Baby smiles and greets the mother, he almost immediately sees that she's not responding. He looks down. His posture has actually collapsed a little bit. He points at her. He looks away. He looks back up at her. But notice how this time he's not smiling. He's much more sober. So one can begin to think, what kind of sense is he making out of what's happening between them? Because this is not the way they usually are together. Then he turns away even more. He greets her again. And that cycle repeats itself. So what I'd like to show you here is first a normal face-to-face -face interaction so that you can see the process of engagement and disengagement, of matching and mismatching. Then there'll be a period of the still face, and then there should be a period of the reunion. See how he disengages?
is the still face. This is the reunion after the still face. <laughs> so you can see, actually, in terms of the reunion, when he crows and he goes, oh, you know, you have to wonder if you've ever been that happy in your entire life as he is at that moment when he and the mother reconnect with one another. But here's a situation where they're able to play together. They have normal matches and mismatches and they're able to correct them together. And then we have this big mismatch that I've created with the still face and the baby can't correct it. And what he does is he has to self-regulate he has to control himself. He, his affective state becomes more negative. And there's something in the world in which he can no longer make sense out of what's going on, even though he keeps trying to get the mother to respond. He keeps trying to make sense out of the world. And then in the reunion episode, you can see how they reconnect and how much positive effect that has on the infant. So what the still face does is, is a withdrawal of mutual regulation. Um, there's, he's forced to rely on self-regulation, so he has to control himself. There's a violation of the expectation of the way that they are together, right? Meaning how they play together, their actions together, and their mutual affects. And this six-month-old is left with only self-created ways of making meaning together because the mother is not making meaning with him um, uh, because of the way that we've forced her to act. So this is a very powerful effect on the infant. And hold one second. We've successfully repaired our interaction. So what are the effects <clears throat> when there's a failure of reparation? Not simply of the still face, but in normal interactions where there's too great a mismatch going on in the interactions. One is there's a feeling on the part of the infant that I cannot control my feelings. There's a feeling that the way that we are together is unsuccessful, that we can't be in a relationship with one another, and we're not able to control it. Again, I think a really critical feeling for the infant who experiences constant failures of reparation is that they get stuck in the negative feeling because they have to regulate the feeling on their own without the help of the other person. And the infant does develop a meaning, but this meaning has to do with having no place in the world, that I don't know how to act in the world. Now, I want to show you one new set of data. I showed it to some of you yesterday, but 
I want to show it because it's not just the actions and expressions of the baby and the mother together that are affected, but it's also their bodily physiology that also changes during interactions. So what we did, and this was done with my colleague Jacob Ham, was to look at two measures of the autonomic nervous system. One is the galvanic skin response, which is a measure of sympathetic activity. The sympathetic system has to do with arousal and the buildup and intensity of arousal. And we also took two measures of heart rate um, that have to do with the parasympathetic system, which acts as a break against the sympathetic system. It tends to slow down levels of arousal. It tends to modulate levels of arousal. And when it gets disorganized, levels of arousal can move out of control. So what we did was we wired up the mothers and the infants for the heart rate. We put on heart rate sensors on the infant. We put heart rate sensors on the mother. And on the mother, we put on sensors for galvanic skin response on her hands or on her fingers. And for the babies, we put the sensors on the baby's feet. And we wrapped them up tightly. And what you're seeing in this slide, in blue for the baby and in pink for the mother, is the measure of GSR. So what I'd like you to look at here is you're going to see a normal play interaction. But what we were interested in was two things. One is how the autonomic system is affected by normal play, still face, and then normal play again. And second, we wanted to see what kind of coordination took place between the mother's physiology and the baby's physiology. Now look how they get coordinated. Now watch what happens during the still face. And one thing to notice in the still face is that the mother is not, is frozen. We've asked her to be that way. But look how active her physiology is. And look for the relations between her physiology and the physiology of the infant. So you can see how many different ways this baby tries to do this. And also, this is more of a question almost, but this fussy crying that you hear from this infant almost sounds false, right? It's like, I'm going to try to get you, and I'm going to get you by 
complaining, not by really getting upset and crying. And then this is the reunion where they come back together again. So what we did, and I'll, I'll skip these because I want to get to the more important part of this, which has to do with the underlying physiology. We see changes between the episodes of the face-to-face -face and the baby's physiology. But we also see relationships between the mother's physiology and the baby's physiology. So for example, if you look at the 0.293, this correlation is of the mother's level of arousal and the baby's level of arousal. And there's also a relationship between the mother's heart rate and the baby's heart rate. So what we're seeing are periods of time in which there's a matching of the physiology and then there are periods of time when there's a mismatching of the physiology. So that the, not only the emotional expressions go through periods of matching and mismatching, but we're also beginning to see periods of time in which the physiology goes through these same sorts of periods. So what happens in the physiology, and this is for an infant, remember the infant is still has a physiologic system that's plastic, that's being developed, that's developing patterns of ways of being together. When you work with adults and you try to get their bodily processes to change, you're already working with a system that's very fixed in the way it functions. And so the problem as therapists is you need very powerful ways to get that physiology to change. The baby's processes are still in process. So the effects of this physiologic matching are that the baby has a sense of bodily coherence. The baby figures out new ways of self-regulating their bodily processes. There's a feeling between the mother and the infant of a bodily connectedness. That is somehow the conveying that we're actually not only moving together, but that our physiology is together. And lastly, there's a sculpting of the infant's physiologic processes. So the infant is learning ways of being together during interactions but they're also learning ways of organizing their physiology, and their physiology is being changed in particular kinds of ways. And so, out of these normal interactions, what develops are ways in the body of being in the world that the individual infant develops over time during normal interactions. That is the normal coordination that takes place between the mother and the infant. Not just traumatic events, but the system, the bodily system gets set through these interactions over the course of time. And also the infant develops a sense of physiologic connectedness with this other person. And as we saw earlier, the infant also de develops a state of consciousness about the place and their place in the world. And that state of consciousness has to do with their body, their implicit meanings about the world, and the way they see the world in terms of the awareness. And so that when you're working with them in terms of bodily processes, you're able to, by working with their body, actually change what I see as the process or their state of consciousness about the way they are in the world. Thank you.
Alô? Pessoal, enquanto eles trocam aqui o computador, vamos dar uma espreguiçada aí, se esticar, levantar.